Okay guys, what we're going to do next is make a cutout on the front of the box for the hinge to recess down into. And if you can see, I've got marked here what we're going to have to cut out. And all the way across, it's just three-eighths of an inch, and it comes to about, oh, it's about an inch and uh, inch and about five-sixteenths or so from each end there that we're not going to have to cut out. The hinge almost goes the full length. But if you take a look here, if I line it up on those marks on each side, that's about how much it's going to lack on each side, which is fine. You don't even really need a hinge to go that far. But this is a big heavy duty hinge and it extends a little bit past the control panel box there. And what I was originally going to do was put another piece of three quarter inch material in there so that this hinge could come all the way in like that and it would stop right at the edge of the control panel. But when I designed the location or you know made the location for the trackball, I forgot about the housing being so large. And the housing is gonna kinda come in too far close to the edge of the inside of the box. So I would only be able to push the hinge in maybe eighth of an inch or so, and it would bump the housing for the trackball. And I'm not gonna mess with you know trying to rebuild the top of the control panel or anything to lock for this. So we're gonna let the hinge hang over. It's gonna hang over almost three quarters of an inch and it's not going to be a problem because there's a full inch to inch and a quarter that the control panel top will extend and it will mostly hide this. The only place that you would see this is if you got down to the side and looked, you might see the edge of the hinge there. But it's still, when it collapses down, you don't want to collapse it down all the way like that because the control panel top never would. It's actually going to be at a slight angle about like that to go with the angle of the side of the control panel box. But we need to at least make up for about that much to recess this hinge down so that the control panel top will sit flush. So that's about 3 sixteenths, uh, excuse me, 3 eighths. That's about 3 eighths, so that's what we've marked here. And we're gonna try to cut this on the table saw. I would use my trim router bit and just put a piece of wood on the inside to guide it temporarily, but the trim router bit only goes probably about half an inch. It can't make it through this material. This is almost 3 quarters. So we're gonna do our best to put the entire box on the uh, table saw and uh, just run it against the guide on the back of the box. So that'll ride against the guide and hopefully we can cut most of this away and we'll have to come and finish it with a handsaw right here on the edges because the blade is circular and it can't finish these cuts all the way to the edge. But if we're lucky, we'll get this done in uh, one fell swoop except for just finishing off with a handsaw. Okay guys, we're finished making our cut with the table saw and it worked out really great even my starting and stopping points, I, I was just estimating from the other side. It's hard to see because this side was face down and you have a circular blade. So from the other side, you can see our line right there. We're a good ways from it. The blade was coming up through the material. I actually had to turn the wheel and adjust the blade to come up through the material. And I knew I had to stop before the end because the blade's curved and it'll cut out more on the other side which you can't see. And just by estimating, I, I hit it dead on on this end. This end was almost dead perfect. I think I have to go about another oh eighth of an inch. That's darn close. And it stayed right on our line in there, exactly where we need to be. So we got exactly three eighths of an inch cut off. I made one little boo-boo there. When I started, I was doing some adjustments. I was cranking the blade up and down and moving the guide on the table saw out and back, and I accidentally moved it the wrong way. And when I moved it the wrong way, it went a little further than I wanted it to. And I started to cut, and it only went probably eighth of an inch deep into it. And when I took it off to check it, I realized what I'd done. I was like, oh man. But this will be covered with black laminate all the way up to here, and it'll completely cover it. I could even put a little wood filler in there. The black laminate will cover it. Plus the hinge will be over this little section right here where the hinge rotates will be sitting right there. And, uh, or well, at least it'll be a little bit from there because it does extend past the front of the control panel box. But it'll, uh, it'll work out pretty good. And as you see, this piece right here is ready to come out. I just have to take a hand saw and finish on the left and right side. And that'll pop out and be ready for the hinge.
using a little tape there to keep it from splintering so badly on the inside. If you had a finer tooth blade, it probably wouldn't be as bad. This is a little bit of a rough cut, but I didn't want to get out any type of electrical saw. Just don't want to let me cut on the forward stroke. It's being real aggravating. This saw is being real aggravating. I'm going to go get my hacksaw. It's got finer teeth on it. Did okay on the first side, but this side over here, it's just the plies of the plywood is grabbing the rough teeth so bad that I just can't get a forward stroke going. And that's the real cutting stroke on that saw is a forward stroke. And I'm afraid he's going to splinter too much. So let me just get my hacksaw. Okay, got my hacksaw here. I could definitely use a jigsaw and have this done in no time. I just didn't want to create quite that much dust and uh, quite that much noise, but that saw right there I was using was noisy enough. We'll just finish with a hacksaw. Should be pretty good at this. Gotta be careful making a splinter. As deep as we need to go, we'll just finish our cut. Cut a little more of this out. And in the background, you hear a three-week-old niece who's staying the weekend with us. I don't think she likes the saw too much. And there we go. Finished up. Kind of slanted down a little bit by accident there. Didn't mean to do that, but it'll all be covered by the hinge. And we're going to sand it a little bit anyways. Did actually pretty good over here with the first saw, even though it's kind of irritating to use. Just going to clean that up a little bit with a sanding block and uh, be ready to mount the hinge. Okay guys, I got the control panel kind of mocked up here the way it's eventually going to go together. And uh, I do have the hinge under there. If you can see, that's what I was talking about, about the hinge sitting a little proud of the front of the box. But as you can see, there's plenty of overhang on the front. We've got around half an inch overhang past the hinge. So even if you're looking at it from the side, it doesn't really look that bad and any, any kind of angle from upwards, you're not going to see the hinge at all. But we've got it in the exact spot it's going to be mounted. And since this control panel box is completely closed, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to mark it so this will fall back into position when I put it together in its final points. Um, I think I want to attach it to the top first and then try to attach it to the inside. And um, 
right now I'm going to make a few marks on it exactly the way it's positioned and I'm going to put some tape on it so I can remove the control panel top and actually hold the hinge in place and just leave it where it is and then I can pre-drill for the screw locations and I went ahead also if you remember there's a thin piece of aluminum that I want to install on this angle on this bevel there because it's going to be striking up against the cabinet a lot when it hits I didn't do this the way a lot of people do it uh, a lot of people will run T-mold all the way around and this is going to have T-mold here pretty soon but they'll run it all the way around and sometimes they'll come all the way in with it and it'll be T-mold either bumping against T-mold or bumping against the side of the cabinet well I'm probably going to stop the T-mold right here just because we have a bevel cut I doubt I'll take any around the side but I want to install this piece of aluminum and it's only a sixteenth of an inch thick but I went ahead and stuck it on there so that when I mocked it up I can make sure that it's all the way flush this this part and not the actual wood with the back of the control panel box because this has to come down and meet exactly with this so that when it's mounted up tight against the side of the cabinet you know everything's flush so it's kind of sitting in there mocked up so that everything can be in position and all of our spacing I've got it all marked out so everything's spaced off correctly and got the equal amount of overhang is a half inch on each side you know front to back on each side so the overhang is equal and right now I'm just going to go ahead and use some pencils and uh, mark up the locations of the hinge on the front and uh, go ahead and put some tape on it so I can remove the panel and pre-drill the screw holes for the top panel okay guys I took some masking tape and I taped around the top of the control panel and down onto the hinge there and uh, it's going to keep the hinge from moving any towards the inside. If I pull this top off and kind of hold the hinge and then just lift it up and tilt it, as long as I don't let the hinge come forward this towards this way with the uh, top panel and I just let it lay back against that way, it's not going to move at all because I've got it taped at multiple locations. And I put pencil marks to the side of the hinge and all across here so I can line it back up if I need to. But uh, I really don't want it to move at all because it's in a perfect location right now. So we're going to pick the control panel top up and just make sure that I don't let it move. And hopefully if I hold the hinge a little bit here, that piece of metal in the back may move or fall. But if I hold the hinge right here, hopefully I can get this out. Maybe I need to take this piece of metal out first. There we go. Set it aside. Just lift this up carefully and tilt it this way. And by doing that, the hinge is actually still in its location. Now, if I, if I keep it like that and keep the pressure that way, then this hinge is not going to move. It's in the exact spot that it was. Now, if I pick up on it, of course, the hinge is going to hinge is going to move up that way but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it exactly like this I'm going to open the hinge up slowly I'm going to mark the screw location so that I can go ahead and mount the hinge to the control panel top I'm going to do probably a little pre-drilling and run the screws in now all this will be taken back apart when I go to paint the control panel top put the artwork on but we just want to go ahead and get all of our you know uh, carpentry done any of our screw locations that need to be drilled out we, need, we want to go ahead and get that done before we do any paint and I think that's just the best way to go and we can you know find the holes again when we go to put the screws back in for you know final assembly but um, when I go to put it on the control panel base uh, I already have it mounted to the top and I'll just have to carefully open it and get at least one screw mounted and once I get one screw mounted the rest of them will be a piece of cake so right now I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill for these and get the screws installed in the control panel top Okay guys, I went ahead and finished up everything that I was talking about for the hinge and uh, got all the screws mounted in for the top panel and I went ahead and uh, lined it up and got all the screws, well it's actually bolts and taps, they're uh, locking nuts on the back side for the control panel box and uh, pretty much the hinge is completely installed and uh, works pretty good. Everything lined up pretty decently about like I wanted to there's a little more of a gap right there on the edge between the control panel top and the box than I would like but you know there's a lot of a lot of little discrepancies in lining up you got to do when you want to do the bolts and stuff still turned out really good I've got uh, bolts and washers going in from the front of the panel here 
And I'm thinking about recessing those before I come back and put black laminate on there. I may do that or I may just let the bolts show. If I let the bolts show, there's a possibility I might change them out if I can find something black. But most likely I'll go with these. Uh, I might recess them and then put the laminate in it over it where they'll be permanent unless you tear the laminate out because I don't see them having any trouble. This side fits real good and tight though. The other side's just got a little bit more of a gap but uh, works really good. Looks nice and sturdy and the hinge is strong enough it actually holds the control panel up at different angles. If you go over too far it'll it'll probably finally collapse but it actually actually holds the control panel a good bit when you're lifting it and stuff. I'm going to put in either a uh, retaining chain or a little pneumatic pump before this is over with. If I've got room I've bought a pneumatic pump and I'll create a locking mechanism and it will lock the panel when it's down and when you unlock it the pneumatic pump will lift the panel. I don't know if I'm going to go to that extreme or not but I did buy one that would fit the panel. We're just going to have so many controls, so many buttons and stuff inside here. I don't know if it's going to fit. But anyway, all turned out pretty good. Looks pretty nice. So that's as far as I'm getting today. Tomorrow I'm going to come back and I'm going to take this top panel off and paint it white and hopefully apply the artwork and make the cutouts for the buttons and all and uh, then start on the black laminate for the sides and the front of the control panel box. And once we finish that, it'll just be uh, putting the buttons and trackball all back in and start the wiring. 